my name is Dies Koper. Um, about half a year ago, I uh, proposed for Fujitsu to work with the community to build an app auto scaling project. Um, there were some rumors from IBM that um, they would open source theirs. Um, so I thought it would make sense to, to work with them. Um, that all took a while, so uh, in the meantime, I've uh, taken over the, the PM job from, for the CLI. And in January, I pro uh, proposed it to the community again um, and got support from SAP and uh, IBM joined us then. Um, and now, as you know, about a month ago, uh, we went live two months ago. And Michael Frankel, who, who will uh, lead this presentation, um, has taken the job of the PM. And um, Bo Yang has been on this project at Bluemix, so he's most familiar with the, the actual solution that we're starting out with. Would you please? Thank you. Uh, sure. So what we're going to do is uh, the slides will show you where we are or were, um, and then um, explain what it is we're providing as part of our MVP release. And then more importantly is what I'd like to do is really get um, an active Q&A to understand what people are really looking forward uh, to see once we have the foundation in place, right? So right now, as Dee's mentioned, we're incubating in the, out of the Cloud Foundry incubator. Uh, if you go there, there's actually a repository that um, has uh, working code. However, it's based on uh, CouchDB, so that's uh, one of the reasons why we've recently, as of last week, reincepted to move over onto a data store that we would prefer, which right now is Postgres. So we are moving from a NoSQL to a SQL model. Um, and at the same time, we've decided to re-architect exactly how the foundation of auto-scaling will actually work. So that way we can actually move forward with the requirements that at least across the initial three companies that are participating in this project, see in the near term. So as mentioned, I'm the project manager for this, and I'm lucky enough to have teams everywhere but the United States. So for me, being in the East Coast, I have teams that are 12, 14, and nine and a half hours off where I am. So. I either come to the West Coast or I go somewhere else so I can talk to them, um, or uh, I just make it work. So, you know, the common question is, what is auto scaling? Well, in today's world, it's you know, I can scale up and I can scale down. Right? It's pretty easy. Um, all you need is a human to just hit the button every time you want it to happen. Right, so obviously the, the whole point behind the project is to automate this, right? And you know, the real question is what is this, right? And from here I will let Bo describe exactly um, what it is we're providing and how that really works. And you want this mic or that mic? Um, I will take some time to give you the basic idea of uh, auto signal service, how it works, and uh, also, uh, introduce, uh, you know, what are the interfaces we provide uh, today and maybe in the future so that you can uh, interact with uh, other second service, right? So there are multiple ways we can automate uh, the scaling of your Cloud Foundry apps, right? So uh, one way I guess uh, most people can think of is, uh, you know, we may want to uh, scale the application based on the metrics. The metrics may include some of the you know, metrics that your application uh, is using in the system resources like CPU memory, or some of the metrics that, uh, which is specific to your app. Like uh, in the Java, we have a JV, uh, JVM, HIP. And maybe sometimes you want to scale your application based on some of the internal data structure that your application is using, right? You have a queue in your application, you, uh, you really know that uh, basically if the queue length is uh, too long, you want to scale up. So you can, maybe you want to scale based on the length of your queue, your queue, you know, of your application. So uh, with this, actually, uh, the only scaling service provide a way for you to uh, scale dynamically based on this kind of uh, metrics. 
So, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, okay, that, this is, uh, yeah, let's go to the next one. Uh, I will, you know, go back to this, what are the interfaces we want to provide, right, to inter interact with the screen service, right? So uh, with uh, dynamic scaling, uh, basically it is, um, I would say it's a, a feedback controller, right? It's uh, pretty much common in the mechanic, mechanic engineering and also pretty much common in the computer system. So the feedback controller is basically something, you know, a control system or management system that you uh, basically regularly check the, your target system and uh, make a decision how to do some changes and apply those changes to your target system. It's not a one-off action. It's something like, a, you know, a regularly and a continuous optimization. It's a sense and a response in a regular way, right? So the metric based scaling is such a way. Basically, the auto scaling service will collect the metrics uh, from the uh, cloud foundry and decide uh, when we want to add instance or we want to remove instance and how. How basically means that how much, how many instances I want to add, how many instances I want to remove, right? So here I give uh, one of the example, uh, which is basically memory. We want to do the memory-based scaling. So uh, the graph above, this shows that, uh, okay, um, at uh, some time at the nine cloud, there are more traffic comes in. I may need more, you know, uh, memory for my application. And then after some time, like uh, after 11 o'clock p.m., then the traffic goes away and I need less, right? So how we are going to do that with the auto scheme service? Basically, the service itself will, you know, uh, collect the memory usage uh, from the CF system. And then uh, they said, okay, there is not enough memory because there are, we define some roles. This means that, oh, okay, if the average memory usage is greater than something like 17%, uh, because your application needs more, so the, the current instance, if you compute the average you know, memory consumption, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, become, it's increasing, then it's greater than 17%, you want to take some uh, action for CPU out, so you specify, oh, I want to you know, add two more instance, right? Then the system will take that action, well, because uh, your memory demand continues to increase, so this kind of change will not satisfy your need. So you go to the next loop uh, to, you know, uh, go through the same thing. It's still, you know, the memory usage is uh, uh, greater than 17%. You, you take another, you know, increase of your instance until you satisfy the needs. So that is basically the idea uh, of the, you know, memory-based, uh, you know, uh, of scaling in this case. So there is a similar thing when you scale down, scale um, in your application, right? You don't need so much uh, memory, so you remove instance automatically based on some of the rules. Um, the advantage is uh, obvious, right? You don't need to um, uh, take care of what kind of workload of your application, right? Uh, the authoring service itself will just the sense and it respond. Well, uh, there are some drawbacks, uh, obviously, right? So, because these are a control loop, so basically you need time. Sometimes you really don't want to uh, make it so fast because uh, uh, if there is some noise or if there is some uh, incident workload, you really don't want to scale out and then scale in again, right? It will cause kind of a fluctuation. So you control, maybe you intentionally slow down that uh, action, right? So this, uh, as a consequence, sometimes it's uh, a little bit behind uh, the uh, resource demand of your application. Uh, in order to uh, solve this issue, actually, uh, not fully, but one of the ways to do that is that uh, we provide another way for scaling, it's called scheduled scaling. So if you really know uh, the workload of your application, you know, given time period, you need more instance or you need more resources that you can do uh, based on the, you know, uh, schedule scale based on some time. So in this instance, basically means that, uh, okay, uh, just before, you know, uh, seven o'clock, 15 minutes before seven o'clock, give me at least 180 
instance so that I can get prepared, right? And uh, also the 15 minutes maybe give my time to warm up my instance so that we are ready to serve your workloads. So this is the basic idea. If you look at this, actually, the schedule scaling uh, doesn't define the metrics, but define only the time period and also the minimal instance number and the maximum instance number. It's not going to define the desired one uh, because you may want to kind of select flexibility right, for the number of instances even during this time period. So during this time period, if you already defined the uh, dynamic scaling policy like uh, the memory based, it still apply, but within the new uh, minimal instance number and maximum instance number. So that is how the schedule scaling works. Um, and a little bit about, uh, maybe I could go best, um, because um, the, we build as a service, so basically we follow the uh, CF service broker API. So uh, once you want to use that, it's pretty simple. Uh, like uh, you use other services, uh, you create a service, and bind the service to your application, right? It's done. And when you bind your service to your application, one choice is that uh, you just specify the policy or the rules uh, in the uh, commands, uh, in the parameter when you, you know, do the bind services. Uh, there are some other ways um, <laughs> to define the policy, there was an API exposing uh, the ways you can create policy, you can attach policy, you can detach policy, and delete policy, right? I, I will not show the, uh, the JSON format of that policy, but basically show some kind of UI. Actually, for the open source one, we don't have this web UI, but uh, we show this trying to give you a basic idea what, is, what are defined in the policy, right? Basically, uh, there is a minimal instance per count, maximum instance per count uh, for your application. It's a similar case for when you define, you know, other scaling group in Amazon, right? Um, uh, uh, web services. And then there will be, for the metric based one, you can define several roles. You select the metric type, uh, in this case, because now today we start with memory, you select memory, and you select the scaling out rules and also uh, specify the scale in rules. Uh, like, uh, you know, in this case, uh, if the memory utilization is greater than 80%, I want to increase one instance. Well, um, if it is less than 30%, I want to decrease, right? And uh, you can increase uh, with a specific number of instances. You can also increase or decrease with a percentage, right? I want to increase 10% or 30%. I want to decrease, uh, you know, 10%, 30%. There are also others to control uh, uh, detailed parameters, control the whole uh, outscaling um, activity. While I, I, I don't want to describe that, maybe, uh, you know, if we we'll go to the open source project, so there will be detailed documents seeing how you control others, like, uh, you know, what is the statistic period and uh, how you are doing the statistics, and how to, uh, you know, handle kind of conflict, what would be the cooldown period for when you do the scaling. You know. And uh, also, uh, schedule the policy. We provide two kind of uh, schedules. One is, uh, you know, um, uh, repeating policy, right? Basically means you specify start time, end time, and also you, you repeat on uh, specific days, right? Uh, in this case, you can repeat on Wednesday, Tuesday, or uh, some days of the week. Uh, maybe in the future we can consider, you know, some days of the month or some day of the year as well. Um, and uh, besides that, you can specify a specific date. You give the exact, uh, you know, the day, exact the start time and time, and, uh, you know, the minimum and maximum instance number. So um, besides that, besides you um, uh, cross RUD the policy, you may want to, you know, say uh, how it does, how the other signaling, uh, you know, does with my app. So uh, we also provide kind of APIs so that you can retrieve your signaling policies. Uh, this means that whether the scaling is successful or not, uh, when it is uh, uh, started to, stay, uh, to scale, and what is the reason why we do the scaling, right? Um, a number of uh, information here. Okay, this is pretty much I want to share uh, about, you know, 
the how it works and um, how you can interact with the uh, Oracle service. Right. So for MVP, we're focused strictly on memory because it's easy to explain and understand, but it provides uh, the most uh, simple way for us to deliver something where, again, it's the framework that's most important right now. So where we're looking to next is, you know, other things that we can scale based on, which will come after. Uh, we're looking at collecting response time metrics from the router. So that way you can do it either based on uh, throughput or, uh, well, uh, uh, or total response times and decide if you need to scale in or scale out based on requests taking longer or shorter, right? Uh, which is similar to how memory works, although for a lot of, uh, well, so if you use Java as a bad example where memory pretty much looks flat from the outside, uh, you don't have a lot of real insight to it where response time will be more relevant. Other things we're looking at is providing a way for uh, application developers to actually provide custom metrics because in the Java case, you could record the actual heap usage, which is a more representative usage pattern of what's really happening. So you, know, you can see that, yes, you're only using 30% of the overall memory usage that appears from the outside. So you get uh, better granularity. Obviously, in order to do that, um, it's something um, we're, we're discussing different ideas as to uh, what we expose to the application. Obviously, it would be a way for the apps to push this um, quote unquote metric. I mean, to us, it would just be numbers that we just, you know, using the basic rules is yes, you exceeded some value. We don't know what it is, we don't care, and magic happens. Um, the devil's in the details on who does the aggregation and if you want averaging and um, other capabilities. Um, so that's part of the reason why uh, by starting with at least one thing, we get a basic understanding of how much we will do as part of the auto scaling service versus how much has to be built out when somebody may want to introduce a custom metric where uh, part of it may be a two part thing that aggregation is an onus on the application developer since we don't really, um, we may not understand instances and other nuances. So again, there'll be some experimentation when we get into custom metrics. Um, and much like response time, there's the opposite, which is throughput. And as Bo gave examples, there are things that are obviously external, which is uh, the router that we can get metrics from, but there may be more throughput optimizations that are internal, like if you're using a queuing system or you're using some backend service, and it may be related to the throughput to those services that you want us to either scale in or scale out. Uh, the last thing I put up was CPU, and I gave it um, a funky looking question mark. Uh, and the interesting thing to that is um, right now, I'm proposing that we don't even go near CPU because it's a thing that makes no sense. Um, it makes actually little sense given the um, platform that we're given and the, the actual metric that we're given. Uh, because we actually are only given uh, one number to represent CPU and we really don't know what that number means because it can fluctuate from as low as, you know, if you're on a, let's say an eight core box you may, we may get a number that says you're using 1% CPU, and I can get a number that says you're using 800% CPU. And I don't know, and I don't think anyone can relate as to is that good or bad, right? Is, do I scale out or in when I have 800% CPU usage, right? Because it could be you're just using the box because we have extra capacity and you can burn that much. Um, so, you know, trying to scale in because it appears high is not the, cri uh, not the correct action. Um, it would have made sense if we had um, known more about the, the CPU usage of the host, how much is actually left over, your, what you're using, and if you had a cap. Uh, but we don't have that information and we can't easily get that. 
Um, so right now, CPU is off the table. Um, so that is it for our presentation, but I'm, I'm more interested in what people are, people being users of the system are more interested in when we talk about auto scaling and what they're looking for in a type of system like this. Anyone? Anyone? Questions? Right, and again, right, people have to realize that these types of automated systems really don't react. The purpose isn't to react fast, right? Because like in your example where you see your, uh, the number of requests go from one to 10 instantaneously. We might not be able to do it, but we can at least catch it at some point. And start right, as long as it's sustained uh, yeah. number of requests, yeah. right. And, and that's really what the system is trying to do, is, is trying to smooth it all out. But yes, uh, given the, the approach we're taking, you can have any number of rules. Um, what, one of the issues that were, will be interesting is when an application has multiple rules, you can conflict. And so there has to be a prioritization that, you know, obviously scaling in takes precedence over scaling out if you have multiple actions that need to take effect. Um, and the moment any action is actually taken, Bo mentioned it, but people may not have caught it, is that you do enter what we call a cool down period where no action can be taken. Because we need to actually let the system catch up that even though we say scale up or scale out, um, it takes some amount of time before one, that action happens, and then two, that it gets reflected in the metrics. So, you know, there, there are um, interesting effects that can occur where, yeah, people want things to happen faster than what they will do. Uh, now, it doesn't stop anyone from doing what I showed on the first slide, which is scale the app in and out yourself. Um, however, you do have to be careful because you do tell us the minimums and maximums that are expected. And so if you happen to go outside those boundaries, we may actually rescale you back into the boundaries that, we've, that we actually know about. Um, and that does depend on what triggers us to actually detect some of this. Um, because uh, again, we're focused on the rules, not so much the, um, the schedules are only evaluated at the time that they are triggered on the edges, not in between. So the service broker is just there as a way to inject the policy into the system, right? And from that point on, the, as long as the application's running, the rules are in place. And you can change. The rules are written through command lines, not like ready-made plans to say, okay, based on some scheduler. Like I'm thinking, like, would it be like set up pre-built plans or would it be everything driven through parameters that you provide to the So we're starting with, um, you provide us the policy per app. We are looking at, and we've designed a way to do it where you can have pre-built policies that are named, and so when you bind the app, you can just say, refer to that policy, if that's what you want. Um, it, it makes certain things a little bit harder because you have to first go to the service, define the plan, or define it on the service instance, and then when you bind, you then do the attachment. So uh, you talked about scaling based on uh, resource uh, usage and uh, uh, performance metrics, but what about price? For instance, if you run on AWS, you don't want to pay for 1,000 resources just because there's some contention. So the question is, can we scale based on price? Um, so the way I would turn it around and say, that's what I would view as a custom metric, and you have to somehow relate the pricing to us because we're not gonna know that, right? We have no idea how you're being charged, why you're being charged, right? So that'll, the onus will be on whoever implements the custom metric to relate some piece of data that takes into account pricing so we can do the right thing. 
that, yes. Right, so I mean the end user would want to specify the price as opposed to the capacity in some sense. And then well, you know the cost, so you could compute that, right? Right, so for us, again, it's all black box. So we would see things as numbers, right? The fact that it represents a price, okay, fine. Uh, but we would need, the, the trick is we need the metric that we can just hook up and just compare the numbers because that's all pricing really is, is you know, a high price, a low price uh, with thresholds, right? We don't really, you know, it could be marbles for all we care about, right? It, at some point, it doesn't matter. No, but I can control the instances that could be dry. So it depends on how price factors in. So if price is really based on um, number of requests that I'm interacting with a service, and that's really driven by the number of instances of an app, right? hypothetical, right? If I scale down the number of apps, I'm also potentially scaling down my cost potential. Right. Um, I have a quick question about the um uh, when you push an application that's already been auto-scaled higher and you're specifying resource limits in, say, the manifest, uh, will that then cause the application to be scaled back down to those initial limits and then the auto-scaler has to kick in again? Yes, so the question is if your manifest specifies a number that uh, is outside the bounds of the min or max, uh, what will the auto-scaler do? And yes, the auto-scaler could care less what your manifest says because it's just looking at what you specified in the policy and what the actuals are or your desired at the time. And your manifest is really reflecting the desired, but the policy will always try to override that, um, which is why I was saying there are cases where you're, you can fight the system, but the system's going to keep reacting and potentially undo whatever it is you're trying to do. Count me as one who was perhaps naively hoping that you could uh, scale based upon CPU. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that problem. I understand the, uh, the number of cores problem. If we could provide a factor perhaps to the auto scale service, perhaps we know all of our execution agents have eight cores on the box. Uh, are, are there problems beyond that you could help me to understand? Yeah, so one, I already know that that's not true, that people do have different numbers per, um, uh, cell or uh, endpoint agent, um, because I, I made that supposition as well, and then I was corrected that um, it does vary. Uh, plus the fact that um, operators are allowed to put in overcommit factors, so we can lie about all this. And the problem is that the metrics we get back are not a reflection of the lie, but our actual reality. So we have two, well, we could get, one is we would have to get more information, um, and then we would have to get enough information that the lies don't matter, right? So overcommit becomes a real issue where when you start lying about your capacity, you're purposely trying to drive your CPUs lower, or your, the usage per application lower in a, highly, uh, a high density type environment. But when you have, um, low density, right, you have freedom to consume all the capacity, in which case the numbers don't um, actually are flipped and the way you're specifying thresholds don't make sense. Right, so uh, a concrete example is normally uh, in a traditional workload, you worry about, oh, look, when this box goes to 90%, um, I'll get an alert and say, you know, I need to spin up more instances. Okay, but and on a box that isn't used and you go to 90%, well, hey, that's great because your, your one instance is handling all the workload that you need and you know, the fact that it's a 90%, well, why do you really care? But, I mean, perhaps it could be an indicator that more could be coming. I mean, if, if I chose a threshold that, you know, if, if my app feels over 80%, maybe I want Right, to so what we can't do is we can't tell if that is really, and you may not have a good, you know, so you could argue that, yes, once I go to 80, 90 percent, you know, spin up more instances, um, you know, and, and we could do that. The question is, is that 
correct for most people? Not sure. But I mean, we could add that type of support for CPU. It's just unclear that, um, you know, the fact that it's not so much 90%, it's the fact that, oh yeah, I can hit 800%. And so when you set the threshold at 90%, and all that means is, well, you have less than a core, right? And the fact that, yeah, there's room for eight of those, right? You can use all eight, but I won't let you because I'll keep spinning up more instances instead. That's when you know, you're, get, you're paying for more when you should be paying for less, right? right? So, that's the struggle, is if I had known, oh, there are eight cores, and oh, by the way, nobody else is using this excess capacity, you've basically used all of it because you can, that's when we have to think about, okay, scaling out isn't potentially right at 90%, it's more correct when I'm hitting the threshold of the box. So it's like 90% of the available capacity versus 90% of what I would think of what my app is using. Which, which might be impacted if I have other applications on the box using 50% as yes. well. Yes, and that's why you need you know, more information about the box and the overall usage of the box the independent app, so. of your app. Okay, thank you. Sure. So you've talked about uh, horizontal scaling here. Do you plan to support vertical scaling where, where, you, where you will increase the size of the container when the memory goes up? No, that's your problem. Uh, I mean, the problem is, I mean, there it's somewhat arbitrary because in reality, I would have assumed you've already sized your container to fit your application profile. Um, and part of the problem, again, is like for Java. I, I, so some of the languages are more um, geared toward that type of workload, but if you're doing Java, right, it, the heap is tuned to the container size. So unless we can get heap metrics, we can't say, hey, let's grow your memory. Yeah. Um, and to do that, now we're getting into um, potential outages because the moment I say, hey, I want to re-push or scale out and increase memory, right, things have to be not so much restaged, but re, uh, restarted everywhere with larger containers. But we do have zero de downtime deployment available in Cloud Foundry, so that could be leveraged. Um, yeah, except it doesn't happen in all cases. Okay. Right? So you have to be careful that um, you could have, no, I mean, you can mistakenly cause things to happen if I try to um, do certain things. I mean, for that type of scenario, you know, part of it is how much should we do as part of auto scaling versus how much should you be doing through your own monitoring of your application to make sure that things are sized properly. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, with respect to uh, both the auto scale options, which one has precedence? Between what and what? Uh, between re scheduled uh, and... So, Right, so the question is between rules, uh, triggers, and schedule, what has precedence? So they actually do two different things. Schedules are all about um, setting or resetting the min and the max uh, 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 boundaries, and the rules actually are the uh, triggers to cause an action to be taken. So they actually work somewhat in conjunction, where the one is what we call is dynamic, right? So the, the triggers or the rules are the dynamic things that are constantly being reevaluated, and schedules just occur on some interval, right? So when an interval occurs, um, the min and the max potentials adjust, and that could cause something to go up and down, but the, the triggers or rules are the things that get evaluated to determine do I increase or decrease over that schedule? Right, so they actually work together. In a, so they, they're complementary instead of opposing each other. Okay, sure. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you for coming and listening to us talk.